This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening and happy Friday, everyone. I'm Stacy Van Dyke. I'm Justin Betty. If you didn't leave town today, you may not think much of our weather, but if you got out into open country, it was an entirely different story. Yeah, this is video a tow truck driver sent us of a 14 vehicle crash. It shut down I-94 westbound near Valley City for about three hours today. It happened around 1030. Highway Patrol says 22 people were involved. They say one person was seriously hurt, while three others suffered minor injuries. That crash remains under investigation. Aside from the trouble on the roads, today's weather also caused the number of flights and local events to be canceled. Valley News Team's Alex Larson spoke with people tired of dealing with the elements. I'm hoping after today, winter's like, all right, that's all I had. I'm ready to be done now. <laughs> the snow, the cold, and the wind can make going outside unbearable and driving impossible. I have had to take several trips to Bismarck on days similar like this with the driving and the snow's blowing and it's just not enjoyable. <laughs> Even if you fly instead, winter can be hard to escape. There's a lot of frustration when you show up at the airport and your flight's delayed or canceled uh, for whatever reason it may be. Certainly we've had our share of weather here in the fargo Morehead area, along with weather issues that we've experienced that are uh, hub markets that we connect to, whether it's Dallas, Denver, Minneapolis, or Chicago. Caitlin Miller's mom works for the airline, so she's a frequent flyer. She says she's seen tons of flights canceled all over the place this winter. It is what it is at the end of the day. We can't control Mother Nature. South of Hector International, NDSU canceled classes today. But to keep a tradition of over 20 years alive, some students just couldn't stay home. Uh, Alpha Tau Omega and Kappa Delta Sorority coming out here and standing outside for 120 hours straight trying to raise money for down home. They've raised over $28,000 this week, but it hasn't been easy. Earlier in the week, it was really nice, and then as the week progressed, it got a lot worse, and now we're out here today. Uh, campus is closed, but we're still out here, uh, freezing for a reason, trying to raise money. And over in Detroit Lakes, even those who wanted to freeze their buns off at Polar Fest couldn't. Obviously, we'd have loved to, to do it, but, um, you know, the below, the 10 below zero was, um, and wind chills was a little bit, would, would have been a little bit much, so. Fortunately, the end may be in sight. You know that once Polar Fest is done and the celebration is done, there is warm up on the way. Alex Larson, Valley News Live. You know it's bad when Polar Fest gets like too cold. Polar, 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 fest. polar yep. fest. Here's a live look at our Dakota Magic Casino. Oh, there's Nathan. He's ready. I'm ready. Yay. Happy Friday, everybody. A windy one today, to say the least. Look at these wind gusts. 65 miles per hour in Mallory, Minnesota, up in uh, near East Grand Forks. Peaver, South Dakota, Roberts County, 64 miles per hour. But even in Fargo and Camp Grafton, 63 miles per hour. Then areas like uh, Jamestown, Grand Forks, Carrington, Ellendale. Glenfield also kind of that 60 mile per hour wind gust range. So it was flat out windy and it was dangerous driving out there with that blowing snow, those tough road conditions. Good news is or good ish news. It's not as windy now, but now our attention turns to the cold wind chill advisory continues for pretty much everybody through the night tonight. Wind chill is expected to be down to negative 40 degrees for us overnight. It won't be windy, but with such cold air coming in, the lightest breath of wind can make that wind chill dangerous. We are seeing now northwest winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Windiest conditions at this hour, mainly lakes country down toward Alexandria. Still seeing some gusts 25 to 35 miles per hour uh, down there. And may still be seeing a few uh, spotty areas of blowing snow in those areas as well. You see Alexandria nine mile visibility, but good news is visibility for everybody is returned and that means that snow is not blown around like it was earlier. Satellite imagery was able to see those streaks of snow getting scraped off the ground and blown around northwest to southeast. So it's pretty cool when you can see that uh, from space, but not so cool when you're trying to drive through it. So for this evening in Fargo, mainly clear skies take hold. Those temperatures falling into the negative double digits. The wind shifts to a southerly direction, though overnight tonight. That south wind will help us warm up tomorrow quite nicely by the time we get to this time on our Saturday. But of course, Ju uh, Justin Stacy, we've got a wild weekend ahead with uh, clip another clipper system that we're watching, so we'll have the full details here in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Nathan. That's good idea to keep the VNL weather app handy for forecasts right at your fingertips when it's like this. You can download and use it for free. Just search VNL weather in the App Store today. Some breaking news for you tonight. Fargo police are asking for help finding a runaway teen. 
Police say 16 year old Blessing Judy ran away from her home today. She's described as five foot three, 125 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes. She was last seen this afternoon wearing a black jacket. Anyone with information is asked to call Fargo Police at 701-451-7660. Police are also asking your help finding this man, Jonathan Ray Moore. Fargo Police say he ran from officers in a stolen car last night. Officers say they noticed a suspicious car at the Exxon gas station on 13th Avenue South. No one was inside at the time and they say they ran the license plate and the car came up as stolen. Officers say when they approached Moore, he got into the car and drove off. Anyone with information is asked to call Fargo Police. West Fargo Police are investigating three burglaries near Aurora Elementary today. Police say the suspects hit three different homes near 36th Avenue West and 5th Street West while no one was home. So far, no one has been arrested, but police say there is no threat to the public. However, police remind you to take some steps to protect your home if you go on vacation. They offer a free watch program where an officer checks in on your property while you're away. You can find a link to sign up for it on our website, valleynewslive.com. Today, President Biden said he is convinced Russian President Vladimir Putin has already decided to invade Ukraine. As tensions continue to rise on the border, Biden also said Russia is ramping up a disinformation campaign, suggesting Ukraine is on the verge of an attack. We're calling out Russia's plans loudly and repeatedly, not because we want a conflict, but because we're doing everything in our power to remove any reason that Russia may give to justify invading Ukraine and prevent them from moving. Make no mistake, if Russia pursues its plans, it will be responsible for a ca catastrophic and needless war of choice. A meeting between Vice President Kamala Harris and Ukraine's president planned for tomorrow is now in question amid concerns Russia could take advantage of that moment to attack. Students in Wapaton are rallying around the family of 23-year-old Braxton Hoffman. He passed away from COVID-19 earlier this month. Braxton graduated from Wapaton High School and has siblings in the district. The Wapaton High School leadership class quickly organized an auction to help the family. People and businesses around the community were more than willing to give. The group of 10 students raised more than $10,000 for the family. 14-year-old Brody Gilbertson was diagnosed with leukemia in October of last year. Tonight, friends and family held a benefit for him in West Fargo. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling shows us what it means to be brave like Brody. It's overwhelming. This was the scene at the Red River Regional Marksmanship Center in West Fargo, as friends and family gathered for a benefit for 14-year-old Brody Gilbertson. Brody was diagnosed with B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia last October and is continuing his battle against it. It's interesting to see all of these people you don't even know just come together and, and support you. And it, it's to know that my child is important to them or important enough to share some of their, their financial means with us is is incredible. Brody, a student at West Fargo High School, has been undergoing chemotherapy and has received multiple blood transfusions. He couldn't join them today after he tested positive for COVID. It means a lot and I really wish I could be there to see them all and thank them, but it really means a lot for them to come. But he isn't allowing his circumstances to slow him down remaining positive during these trying times and to be brave like Brody. While the young man still faces a bone marrow transplant at the Mayo Clinic, his family wants him to know that they are with him every step of the way. Brody has said himself that it'll make him a better person. It'll make him more, more sympathetic to people who are going through bad days and know that, yeah, you can have the worst of the worst days, but you can still get through it. In West Fargo, Air Walling, Valley News Live. That is brave indeed. The Lend a Hand Up program is providing a $5,000 boost to this fundraiser. For more information, just head to our website, valleynewslive.com. The Olympics has been filled with dramatic performances and big stars, but one of its biggest stars isn't an athlete at all. We'll explain in just a few minutes. Look at this time lapse from our Dakota Magic Casino Skycam showing the variable visibilities we saw of those pockets of blowing snow and the strong wind we saw pretty much all day long. Definitely quieter at this hour, but the wind makes a return for us tomorrow and for Sunday. I'll break down your weekend forecast next.